Again, so this is how we record. On here, second y equals, on stat plot, we want to press enter, make sure we're at on, make sure our x list is L1, our y list is L2, and then press second click. Okay. From here, we want to press mode. We are going to then scroll upwards. So you're going to press the up button. We want to make sure where it says stat wizards and stat diagnostics that both of them are on. We don't care about anything else here. We just want to make sure that stat wizard is on and that stat diagnostics is on. Wait, what did you press on? Mode and then scroll upwards. So mode and then go up. You should have stat wizard on and stat diagnostics on. Okay. From there, you quit. So again, mode, go up. Stat wizards, stat diagnostics, on. Okay. Now we're going to go to stat. Stat is right here. This button here says stat. That's why it's a stat button. You press enter. Where it says edit, you press enter. Okay. L1 needs to be X and L2 needs to be Y. So here you're going to enter in data. Your data... Your X is the mass here. So we want to put our masses in this row here. So to do that, you just go to the spot, press enter. I got 1.2944. If you were absent, these are the numbers you're using. You use your group's data. So plug in your masses here. And L2 is the Y. That needs to be your acceleration. So I need you to plug all those in. 1.0444. Again, use your data, not this data unless you were absent. If you were absent, this is the absent data. 0 0.5. Where's the mass? Total system mass. Total system mass. So this is column 1, this is L1, this is L2. Once you have all your data, you are going to press zoom 9. When you press zoom 9, that zoom and then the number 9, it's going to give you the plot. Okay, It should not give you that line that's from what I did last class. It should just give you this fit, which is the shape we are looking for. Okay, So again, we, we did stat, edit, punch in your data, then press zoom, which is the top middle button and nine. You should not get this line going across, but you should see your data here. Uh, I think your data is a little too perfect. I took the average of everybody else's, and we know you, you guys are not perfect, so. Uh, I didn't need that to show up. Okay. Anyway, now from here, again, we've done stat, edit. We got this, and we zoom nine so we could see this. Okay. This is not a linear fit, right? This line does not match up with what I've been given. Okay. We need to linearize our data. On the handout, you will actually graph it, and it should look like these points. You should take up as much space as possible. You're, you're going to do that on your own time. The next graph, we want to graph it. We want to linearize it. So we're going to do acceleration versus 1 over the mass, which means on our calculator, in order to see it, we want 1 over the mass. We're going to go to stat and edit again. And now we need to change L1 to our data from the table, which was 1 over mass. This is what needs to go on the table. Now, don't change. Don't start typing yet. Here's a really easy way to do this. Go up to where it says L1. Press Enter. Clear it out. We can make a function. So if we want to take all of this data and take 1 divided by it, we just say 1 divided by second L1. It will do the math for you. So rather than having to retype everything, you can say, hey, we're going to take everything that's in here, which is L1, and we're going to take 1 divided by that. We're going to inverse it. What's L1? L1 is second 1. Oh. You press enter, and it did all the math for you. So now when you zoom 9, 
you should get a linear fit, okay? Should get a linear fit. It looks like much more of a straight line. That was the line for my last class average. So this is looking very close to yours. I need to get that line because it will tell us the slope, okay? We want to get a line that is best fit to our data. So in order to do that, we're going to go to stat, calculator, linreg. We want our list to be L1, L2, and if you go down to calculate, it's going to solve it for you. It will get you the number. Again, stat, calc, linreg. Stat, go to the right calc, go down to linreg. We're going to press enter. That's a line, okay? Now, we want to store it so we can see it on the graph. So if you go down to where it says store reg EQ, okay? Here we're going to press VARS, which is right here. This button here where my finger is, VARS. I'm going to go to the right, which is Y VARS. I'm going to repeat this again. And then you press enter, enter. And it should store Y1 for you. Okay, again, so you can see it. Stat, calc. Linreg, you go down to where it says EQ, you're going to press VARS now. You're not pressing enter, just pressing VARS. You go to the right to Y VARS. Once you're at Y VARS, enter, enter. Because it's going to insert Y1 for you. Yep. Um, I did write it down because that's what I'm looking at. So ignore that problem. We're on this step. We go to, let me back it out, stat, calc, linreg, press enter. I should put enter. You go down to store reg EQ. So here's where we want it. You want to store it. And then you press vars, y vars. Enter, enter. Now when we calculate y equals ax plus b, what's my slope? What variable? A. So it's telling me the slope of my data that I'm looking at is 0 0.0284. It's 39. 0 0.0284. It also tells me my r and r squared values. Okay. The closer this is to 1, the more accurate your data is. 1 is perfect. 0.99 is pretty good. 0.98 and below is not good enough for what we are doing. Okay, If in your data you're getting 0.98, that means you probably messed up on one of your points. If you're like 0.99 and better, that's where we want to be in the future. Oh, what Oh, no, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah, 0.284. So that's my slope. If I go to graph now, now it's going to show you this line is going across. Which of my data points looks the worst? Let me zoom in. You can see, like, that one's not the best data point. Look at your own data. Press graph and look at it. And you should be able to see, hey, are all my points on my line or is there something messed up? Okay. If you're getting less than 0.99 on your R, then something's probably visibly, noticeably off here. And maybe you typed it in, in the data wrong. But this is giving you the slope of this line. Again, what slope means here, this is on graph part two because we did mass or one over mass and acceleration, right? Let me zoom out a little bit. What does the slope of a best fit line represent? Well, it would be A over 1 over M, which is M times A, which is net force. Net force is in newtons or kilogram meters per second squared. So when you get your slope, that R value, I want you to write it down there. And this is why we're doing it on the calculator, because you, you can get the slope by hand but it's not going to factor in all the data points. We don't have the skills to do it. The calculator does that for us. So we go to that stat, calc, linreg, and you calculate it. Mine's 
So that means 0 0.284 Newton is my force. What was making this whole thing accelerate? Gravity. Gravity on this mass hanger, right? In order to get that number, so the actual value, right? We would take how much mass was hanging there? What did we put on it? Do you remember? 25 grams. It was a 20 gram on a 5 gram hanger. So that means the force would have been 0 0.025 times 9.81. And this is the same for everybody. So this is what we're comparing it to. 0 0.025 times 9.81 gives me 0 0.24, 0 0.2453 newtons. This is the predicted value. This is how much force should have been pulling it down. This slope is what you calculated it to be. Wait, how did you get the top number that you boxed in? This is from the LINREG. So when you do STAT, CALC, LINREG, and you press CALCULATE, it's the A number here. So that slope there, that number, is what I wrote down there, and I'm comparing it to this. So in our tested data, on average, I have that we have 0.284. Anybody get any closer to 0 0.2453 than that? What'd y'all get? Mm -hmm. Y'all are an outlier. Might not be a good thing. Um, all of third period was an outlier. What'd y'all get? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to see that it's not perfect. There's definitely sources for error in this lab. Okay, what types of things might have been error in the lab? Um, we timed it. We timed it, so that's going to be a factor. Now, the time were the times big numbers or small numbers? Was it like 0 0.02 seconds or was it like one point something? One point something. So. Um, our times, they're bigger than what we normally have, so it's going to be off. It's not going to pay as big of a factor as it usually is. When we do those short distances, when things are moving faster, being off by 0.1 seconds is a much bigger deal than if it's taken three seconds to do it. So it is a factor, but it's not huge this time. Uh, what about the masses? Did anybody weigh any of the masses yesterday? They were not 250. So if you weighed the masses, you would have seen some of them are like 254, 256, and others are like 248. They say all say they're 250 grams, but there's definitely some error there. So that's going to cause our weights to be off. Um, other things, again, if you did not take the car and everything that was on it and weigh it between every trial, which I did not tell you to do, that means we don't know the exact mass every time we're doing it, and that's some source of error. Because again, they might be 250. But most of them, I don't know if I weighed any that were actually 250. They're all in that ballpark, like 256 to 246 in that range. Huh? Okay, that's way off. Yeah. So, again, these are sources for error, potentially. Okay? What I want you to do, see if you can rem You guys think you remember those steps? Yep. If I put it up here, can we try and do that with our next set of data? Okay, our next set of data on part two, you're going to do that. Uh, we want to do net force and system here. This is going to be L1. Net force is L1. System acceleration is still L2. Use these two data points, again, to get to that. It is, where are we at? Stat, edit. Stat, edit. Change these to these two numbers here. See if you can do the same steps. So I'll put it up here. Do we have to divide those by one? Is that that is. One? No, you don't have to divide by one. Yeah, okay, let me get. Let me write my data down, and I'll take you through it step by step. Otherwise, the, it's up here. You're putting in your data from this. This is for part two. We're just doing the same thing for part two. No. No, you just make this L2, this L1, and then do those other steps. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy my data down, and then I'll take it through step by step with y'all. If, if you're a little lost, it's okay. Oh.
System acceleration. Yeah, when you guys are like today, I'm just showing you the calculator stuff so you can see what it should look like, but you'll actually plot all your points on there. That's because we haven't got to that last step and updated it. So it's just going to keep showing up from the one before until we update it. Yes, sir? That's what we wanted on that first one. It'll be different on this one. We got to talk about this one still. Yes, ma'am? Um, I went to the stat thing, and then it showed me this, and I started to go to the bars, y bars, and when I go to the function, press enter, enter, it just does that. Oh, okay. Go back. Show me again. Enter. Oh, wait. Am I not putting it right there? Right there. Now put the bars. Uh, sorry. Enter. Yep. Right. That My bad. You're good. So, so the net force is just the slope of your thing. Oh, on part one, part two. Part two net force is now your L one. The slope is going to tell us something different. I'm going to go through it here in a here in a second. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to start kind of going along so you can see what I'm doing. I'm entering my acceleration goes into L2. So I should have 0.2570. 0 0.4258, 0 0.6347, 0 0.7645, 1.0505, okay. On L1, I'm just inputting the numbers. Everybody should have the same numbers for L1 pretty much, depending how you did your math, but pretty much the same thing. Okay. Once you have your data here, once this is filled in, okay, we've edited X and that. We're going to, oh wow. We have plenty of time. We're going to press zoom nine. And we can see our plot. Okay, that line is just showing up from before. Does this data look okay? Does that look like a linear fit? It does look like a linear fit, like a straight line. What's not, was there any error here? Uh, it's probably hard to tell up here. On mine, when I'm looking directly at it, it looks like this point's a little off. If I do a best fit line, that's probably going to be the one that messes up. From here, stat, calc, linreg. Stat, calc, linreg. We still want L1, L2. We are going to store is variables, y bears, enter, enter. And now we calculate. This gives me an A. My A is 0 0.98. I'm going to write this down somewhere. 0 0.981. My R is 99. My R squared is 0.98. OK, so it's not quite where I want it to be. There's definitely some error here. OK. Now to see it, I'm going to graph. We can see the best fit line. And 
What do you see on mine? Outlier. This is an outlier. This doesn't look great either. This is barely on it. This is off. So that tells me those are the two points that I messed up on, right? If I want to trace them, ooh, if I can find it, that's my point that is what? 0.83 and 0.75. That looks like my fourth point. And then the next one would be my fifth point. When we're thinking about that. Fourth point and fifth points being off. They're the fastest. They're the hardest ones to time correctly. Okay, we probably didn't mess up on weight because that's really easy. We just hang a mass on there and it should be right. So the issue that I'm seeing here is that it's probably messed up on hand timing, which makes sense. It's going the fastest. That's where the air is going to show up the most. Okay. Now when we graph this, what does this tell us? We've got acceleration on the left side. We've got net force down here. Do we remember what this was? Okay. This is from what we did the other day. When I got my slope again, let me get that number. It was point zero point nine eight one. My slope here is acceleration over force. Does that tell us anything? Okay, I thought this would happen. So, we know, and I'll say net force, we know net force equals ma, right? If I divide by a, I get m is net force over a. When we did a over f, we just got 1 over the mass. If we take 1 divided by our slope, that should be very close to the mass that we put on our car, the total mass. So if I clear this and back out, I can do 1 divided by my slope. You guys use your slope, 0.981. I get 1.019 kilograms, 1.019 kg. Okay, there's definitely error in this. If we total up everything that was supposed to be in our carts, right? What was your average mass of your carts? Or what, uh, what was your total mass for part one? What'd you guys get? Mm -hmm. You didn't do that? Okay. Anybody do total mass on the first part? Or on the second part? No? Okay, total mass is this, right? Mass of the cart was about 275 for most people, right? We added 1,000 grams on top. We added 25 from the mass hanger. And if you did the cup, it was like 8. If I divide that by 1,000, 1.308. Okay, that was roughly the mass for most people. It should be in that ballpark. Calculation wise, we got 1.019. Is that close enough? We want to be closer. Okay, again, there's going to be sources of error in the lab. The other thing that I thought of uh, what made it so that the cart didn't hit super hard on the end? What, what was helping that? Magnet. So when it got close, what does that magnet do? It pushes back the other way. That's probably throwing all of our times off a little bit that we weren't thinking of. It's better than it running into the thing and knocking it off. I don't know if that happened to any of your groups where it hit the end and go everything go flying on the ground. Yeah, that happens. The magnet was better than that, but that is going to cost a little bit of error. Again, our times, when I look at that graph, I could see on mine with your average data that, hey, we're probably messing up on this point and this point, which is when it's going the fastest, so that's going to be from the time. Again, we said when we put the masses on there, they're not all perfect. So it's none of the errors were huge. But you see how those little errors add up quite a bit? The other thing with time, when we plugged it in our equation, it was dividing by time squared. So whatever like fraction we're off there, that's an exponential difference now. It got squared. So those are things that are messing up our lab data. Questions on that? Okay. We're going to keep doing this thing in lab. So what we'll be able to do since we now know how to do this, and I'll, I'll print out some instructions and maybe keep them in the lab so you can see what to do on the calculator. Or maybe I'll make another video just showing you how to go through. We can punch in our data in the calculator while we're doing the lab and bring this up. And when I go, oh, this point's here, let me redo my fourth trial. 
oh, this isn't quite right. Let me redo my fifth trial. Does that make sense? So maybe we'll just do like part one in a day where we only got to get five points, but we want to spend enough time to make sure they look really good with the rest of our data. That's where we're going moving forward, okay? Um, what I need y'all to do, this is going to be due Tuesday. You can do this. It, yeah, that's reasonable. I would like you to still work during class, um, but go ahead and plot your data here. Go ahead and plot A versus net force for this one. Make sure you get these two graphs. You know what they should look like because we did it on the calculator. I just need you to space this out and take up as much space as possible. Eyeball it. Do the best you can on that and answer the questions. It's going to be due Tuesday.